Hi, it's Brendan here, and recently I've been answering frequently asked coach development questions. How do you become a better coach? How do you improve your business? How do you improve your lifestyle? And today I want to answer a question that comes in quite a bit, which is, do I need a master's degree to work in strength and conditioning? Or do I need to be an academic in that way? So, I think for me, the, the industry has changed a lot, and is changing a lot. And there's essentially three routes that I, or three career pathways that I think are worth discussing in this clip. So the first one is the performance personal trainer, performance coach pathway. And that's a great role because essentially I define that as somebody who works, essentially does some personal training and also has athlete based clients and they do a fantastic job and they work for themselves. They're probably a business person or an entrepreneur, somebody who can run their clients and, and deliver and build a great business and add a lot of value. Now, absolutely, categorically, you do not need to have anything from an academic standpoint there. You've got to be smart. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be a great coach. You've got to have good communication skills, but that's nothing to do with going to, to university uh, at all. That's about getting out there and doing it and getting experience. So if you want to be really dominant in that performance personal training niche and have athletic clients out there get better at coaching get better at business and marketing get a great mentor somebody can take you to the next level there the second role i want to discuss here is i call it the hybrid model the hybrid strength and conditioning coach so that's somebody who again probably works for themselves has their own business but they have a range of clients from sports teams and, and contracts with governing bodies, people like England Golf and uh, different rugby teams and consultancy work. And they also deliver one-to-one, -one, be it personal training or strength and conditioning work, privately. So it's, it's still a business role. You've got to think of yourself as a business person, an entrepreneur. You've got to have a mindset towards business there. Um, but I think from a, a qualifications standpoint, it's very similar to performance personal training. You will get contracts and clients based on how good you are as a coach and how well you communicate and how good your marketing is. Now, qualifications-wise, we're going to talk about that at the last part of this, but essentially, still not no requirement for this super academia. You don't need a master's degree. You don't need to go down that path at all. You need to be a great coach. You need to put yourself out there and align yourself with great people. The final role we will discuss today is the role of the full-time employed strength and conditioning professional. Somebody who works in a performance sport environment. And something that, that I've done for many, many years along with my kind of hybrid. I think I've always been a hybrid S&C coach model, but I've also had a full-time job. I think I just worked too many hours. But, uh, but this final strand is this what I would class the full-time employed position. And you do see a lot of adverts out there for coaches, the roles that are demand or asking for masters or they're asking for UKCA and in very infrequent adverts they even ask or they like a PhD. I know I saw one at Manchester United. And I think the very the reason they do that is because they're inundated with responses, so it's a way of sh shifting out CVs from with it that have been thrown in there. So just a way of creaming off at the top. Now, I do even think that this is changing. I think a lot of those roles that you see advertised are very much filled before the application is even is even processed, the interview is even taken. There's a good strong candidate for a lot of this, and. You know, we've got a, a good reputation at putting people into these roles and, and, and aligning people with what the requirements are. And so there's an element of playing the game. You've got to be able to tick the boxes so your CV doesn't get dismissed. But also, you have to know and have a great network. You have to, it's, it's who you know here, very much about who you know. It is in the other two roles as well, but very much about who you know here. So working hard on your network and your relationships with other coaches and uh, other decision makers, people like 
the heads of sport at universities, the performance directors and the head of SNCs at professional clubs and people in key positions within governing bodies that will give you a thumbs up when they're asked about are you any good or not. I think there's more opportunities here if you can make have a point of difference. If you offer something that somebody else doesn't quite offer and define yourself with a point of difference there with a great network and being able to go in there and deliver it and people can trust you. So there are people out there, many, many examples that do not have a, a, a master's degree. So I even have a degree in, in very in quite uh, certain circumstances. They are proven because they can get results. They might have vocational qualifications, but they put themselves out there and they've taken the time. So even in that employed position, it's about having a point of difference, it's about having a great network, and it's about having people who can open doors for you. So I hope that's given you a good insight into the three different spheres or, or opportunities out there for strength and conditioning professionals and fitness people. You've got your employed position here, where you're working in the sports teams, you've got your hybrid model where you've got some contracts and your performance personal training route where you can create a lifestyle you want, you're an entrepreneur and you can open up your own gym and do a great job. So if you want to join us and chat to us about our mentorship process, give us a shout, we'll put the link out and we'll speak to you again very soon.